Hello everybody. I don't know if I, I have to say good morning or a good evening because uh, I'm not a specialist about the time zones. I would like to thank uh, World Archery Asia for uh, the trust uh, they placed in me by asking me to uh, present a part of uh, this uh, seminar about uh, para archery. The real pleasure of course would have been to share this time with you in your presence in the same room sharing the bow sharing the arrows and using some specific equipment but of course we all understand that it's not possible during this period so it's an honor for me to share this time with you and with your computers my name is vincent Ibwa. Uh, you won't have to listen to me for a long time before you understand, thanks to my uh, accent, that uh, I am uh, French. You can see on the, on the, um, on the slide my uh, um, email address. You can use it to ask me after this uh, uh, course. You can uh, use it to ask me some questions and I will try um, to, to answer uh, to you. I'm the team manager and the head coach of the French para archery team since 2010. I'm working for the French Handy Sport Federation. In my country, there is two federations, one specific for archery and another one for the people with disabilities. I'm working for this second federation. I'm the author of a book, Practice Archery Beyond Disability. Of course, this book is in French, but the Federation of Great Britain is uh, working to translate this book in English. So I hope uh, we will have uh, very soon the opportunity to read it uh, in English. I'm a lecturer for the World Archery and World Archery Europe since 2018. I uh, worked in different para-archery seminars in Asia, in Africa, and uh, in uh, Europe. World Archery Asia asked me to uh, organize this uh, presentation on two points. The first one is how to approach a person with a disability. To help you to organize your relationship between uh, the able body and the disabled body archer, I will give you some definitions and different points of view about uh, disability. The second point is how to teach archery for people with disability. For this point, it's very important for me uh, to uh, help you to understand that archery is for everyone. Each one can practice archery. I don't know anyone who cannot practice archery. There is no pathology, there is no impairment that prevents the practice of archery. If you accept that, if you understand that, of course, you will organize your uh, teaching uh, with able and disabled body archer together. It's very important to have uh, an inclusive way of teaching. So uh, I will try to give you the keys for that uh, with uh, a way of uh, uh, thinking the technical actions of archery and I will uh, present you some uh, adaptive uh, devices. For this uh, first slide um, you can see a picture with a woman trying to go into the water. Which point of view on the disability on this uh, picture? This woman is disabled. How can we say, why can we say that she is disabled? There is three sentences, of course, the three are a part of the reality and the three are different points of view. On the first one, her legs don't work and she can't walk. Probably this woman had uh, have a spinal injury. She used a, a wheelchair to, um, to move uh, herself from a point to uh, another one. In this sentence, uh, the first vision puts the impairment, uh, uh, the pathology, at the forefront. We can say that this person is summed up by her disability. She is disabled before being uh, a human uh, uh, being. I, we can say that. She is disabled before being a human uh, being. The second sentence, most swimming pools are not accessible. This woman is using a wheelchair. 
she cannot go through the doors because the doors are too uh, short. Uh, she cannot take a shower because there is no specific equipment with a stool to take the shower. Uh, the way to go to the locker room is too hard and not accessible. In this second sentence, the problem is not the spinal injury. The problem is the way to build a swimming pool. The problem is on the society. We uh, shift the focus of the disability from the individual woman to the society. The problem is that uh, the society has not provided the necessary accommodations for uh, this woman, for the people with disability to go to the swimming pool. The example is for the swimming pool, but of course you can think about your uh, uh, your uh, the, the the field the archery uh, and the the way you, you we can practice archery in your country in your uh, associations. In the third point, there is no specific system to go from the ground to the water. Uh, it's this sentence is sort of uh, mixed between the first and the second one. The problem is not the legs. The problem is not the the the, the society who cannot uh, provide the the necessary accommodations. The problem is that at this moment this woman wants to go to the water. Uh, the it's a problem of uh, circumstances we can say. In this situation, there is a disability because there is no specific equipment to go uh, to uh, to the water um, it's we say that it's a situation of disability i can uh, i can give you another uh, example for you we can imagine that i am blind if we uh, were together in the same room and if someone of you asked me uh, can uh, what is this specific uh, equipment if I cannot see anything, I cannot answer uh, at first to you. I have to touch the, the specific equipment to uh, make an answer. In this situation, I am in front of my computer. Um, if someone uh, put the uh, camera on the right direction, I can speak to you. And, of course, I'm not in a situation of disabilities to speak to you. Uh, I cannot see you, I cannot see uh, all the people uh, because there is a, a no uh, way to share the same room. So uh, I'm not in a situation uh, of disability even if uh, I am uh, blind. So it's very important for me to share this uh, slide because it's a way of thinking. For me, uh, the disability is not a problem of pathology, it's not a problem for society, is a problem of living together and and to find a way to help all the people to have uh, the same opportunity for us to practice uh, archery. How to manage the relationship between able and uh, disabled people? Spatially. Uh, in space there is a, a difference between people standing and people in a wheelchair and this can cause problems uh, in discussions between two people and, uh, and within a group. For the first example, in one-to-one, -one, when you are standing and talking to a, a wheelchair archer, there is a difference in height. This difference can create, um, can simulate, can be felt as a situation of, uh, of uh, authority. If you are too close, your height can give the impression that you want to impose your ideas. If you need to evaluate a competition or to have some feedback uh, from your archer on the training session, this relationship of authority is uh, certainly not uh, what you want. On the contrary, you want uh, your archer to feel very confident, to exchange with uh, you very freely. It's important to, uh, uh, to, to, to create a comfortable situation for uh, this uh, exchange. It's the better is to find a chair and or a, a table to sit um, and to take enough distance between uh, you and your archer to be sure that uh, when you will uh, look at him eye to eye, this uh, difference of height will not be a problem. 
For the second example, you uh, can uh, uh, be with your team uh, on a ceremony uh, um, before a competition or after a competition. It's very important in this moment uh, to be sure that all the people in the wheelchair will be uh, in, in, in the front of your group, at the beginning of uh, the group. It's uh, the only way to help them to uh, to take part of uh, of the ceremony to to take uh, advantage on the situation on the ceremony and not uh, on uh, on your back for the visually uh, impaired archers the relationship to uh, space is very different the problem is not the problem of discussion the problem is not to be uh, in front or uh, or not the problem is to uh, understand uh, where they are um, the, the, it's important to help them to understand how the field of play is organized where are the targets where are the toilets where are the restrooms where are every, uh, the, the, the rest the, the, the place where they will have to eat um, you will uh, it's important to help them to recognize each of this space to be sure that uh, they can go to this uh, field of play in a situation of uh, security for for them and and of course uh, for uh, for you uh, it's very important to help them to appropriate all the new spaces the the field of play the hotel everything the time uh, the value of the time is not the same when you are working with a uh, able body archer and disabled body archer. Uh, I can give you a three examples. The first one um, is uh, because of their pathology, uh, some archers uh, can have problems of uh, memory. You will have to repeat your name, you will have to repeat uh, the process, you will have to repeat the, uh, all you want to say to them and, all, and again and again and again and give them a way to understand it uh, more easily. Uh, this should not be a problem for you, it, it's very important. It's like that and you must say it again. The second example uh, concerns some people with cerebral palsy who have uh, difficulties to express uh, themselves. For example, hello, my name is Vincent. Hello, my name is Vincent. Of course, it's uh, easily to understand and it don't take uh, uh, so much time it doesn't take the same time but it's very important for you uh, to if you want to work uh, with, with them uh, to give them the opportunity to tell to you what they want if you finish their sentences if you uh, ask them to uh, send me a mail it will be easier for me at, at every time, uh, the relationship, of course, will not be uh, positive. The third uh, example uh, is that some uh, some some things are cannot be uh, compressible. Uh, going to the bathroom, going to the toilets uh, uh, requires an incredible incompressible time. It's very important to understand that. Uh, and for our uh, uh, para athletes with uh, spinal injuries, it's uh, it's like that at every time. The time it takes to to go to to the bus with standing people and uh, with uh, people in a wheelchair is not the same. And if it's possible to say to a group, "Oh, I didn't uh, look at, 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 on my watch, and the bus will go in 15 minutes, so go quick to uh, quickly to to the restroom, and 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 we we, we will uh, go together uh, in the bus." It's possible with the able-body archer. It's impossible with the disabled body archer with spinal injury. It's uh, the best way to be sure that uh, you will miss your bus. Interference. Some people, um, we saw that uh, 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 
interference with the way of speaking but you can have the same with some 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 movements some unwanted uh, movements uh, this uh, can create a discomfort uh, for you uh, you can be uh, more attentive on the movements than uh, uh, to, uh, to to what they want to tell you you will quickly get uh, used uh, to it what is important is not to give values to these movements uh, not to translate that because of that they will be able to do that and that and not that and that it's um, uh, it's not like that it's of course you can see that because of these unwanted movements it will take more time but what will be possible or not it's impossible to uh, to say that at the at the beginning you must give them a chance to do and to do and to do again and again and again you have to create the conditions of uh, the uh, of a real exchange between uh, the archer the para archer and uh, and you uh, the the person who knows uh, his uh, handicap is uh, uh, impairment um, and its consequences uh, is uh, the person who carries it so you must make a team with them it's very important to to, to organize it like that now we will uh, speak about the definition of uh, the dr wood from the world Health organization this uh, definition is the definition of the ich international classification of handicap uh, it's a, a way to help you to uh, to work with uh, people with uh, some uh, impairments this definition is in three parts impairment incapacity and situation of uh, disadvantage we will see uh, the first definition definition of impairment it's a lack of substance or an alteration of a function or of a psychological cerebral physiological or anatomical structure we can give some examples on the field of play uh, in archery motor impairments there is different types of impairments first one motor impairments we can say that all the people in the wheelchair with the spinal injury it's a motor impairment we can say that uh, people who are amputee about one leg two legs one arm two arms it's the situation of a motor impairment sensory impairment in uh, para archery we can uh, only speak about visually impaired archers cerebral impairment it's very important to understand that uh, i give you some example about cerebral palsy with difficulties to speak with the uh, problems of uh, memories in in this situation some uh, people had an accident with a head trauma and this uh, uh, trauma um, affects the the memory affects uh, some some uh, uh, part of the of the brain but they can understand they but they cannot remember they can understand but it's uh, a long time to do um, and uh, we will see that in this uh, board impairment motor impairment for example a genesis in one arm a genesis it's uh, the same that um, uh, than uh, the amputee people so for, uh, but uh, for the amputee it's uh, after an accident in a genesis it's uh, uh, um, you were bo born uh, like that sensory impairment we can imagine that the, this man is a, a visually impaired archer he is blind and cerebral uh, traumatic brain injury impairment it's uh, the the people who have uh, an impairment have this impairment for all the day of their life uh, 24 hours a day seven days a week in 365 days uh, a year it's not your you are a para archery coach you are not a doctor you are not uh, someone who try to to make some research to uh, help the people who are blind to uh, recover the view uh, to help the people who are in a wheelchair to to walk again it's uh, you are a para archer in, in this uh, part of the of the board you cannot do anything you just need to know ah okay you are blind ah okay you are there you you, you just have uh, one arm incapacity definition of incapacity 
in the health, uh, health sector, incapacity means any partial or total reduction of the capacity to do something in a way or in the limits considered as ordinary for a human being. Uh, it's ordinary to speak when after uh, two years, uh, it's ordinary to, to, to walk after uh, just a little more than one year, it's ordinary to, uh, to, to put your clothes by yourself at, and so on. Uh, we can have some examples of uh, incapacity. Incapacity uh, to uh, to do the ordinary acts of the daily life: eating by yourself or not, uh, washing by yourself or not, wearing by yourself or not. To uh, and after uh, you can have some more incapacity: incapacity to learn, incapacity to communicate, incapacity to move yourself, incapacity to uh, handle uh, something, and. Uh, in this uh, picture, for example, the incapacity is uh, to uh, practice archery in an uh, ordinary uh, way by uh, pulling uh, the string on the bow with uh, with the, the with the fingers. Uh, in this situation, uh, there is just uh, one arm, the the bow arm, and there is no uh, no arm uh, uh, to to take uh, to take the string. Back to our board. Uh, agenesis in one arm for archery it's the incapacity to take the bow with the arms one arm so we can say incapacity to take the bow inca or incapacity to take the string blind the incapacity in uh, archery is uh, to sight the target or uh, to see uh, your sight and the, the, the cerebral impairment with a traumatic brain injury it's uh, the uh, incapacity to uh, absorb a lot of uh, information. Once more, you are a coach, you are not a doctor, you are not a physiotherapist, you are not uh, a researcher. So uh, at this moment, it's very important to try to understand the consequences of the impairment on your archer to practice archery. It's necessary to understand just that. Um, it's important once more to say that this incapacity to do is due to the impairment. For example, I cannot speak uh, Chinese, uh, but um, we cannot say that uh, I have the incapacity to do uh, to speak Chinese because of an uh, impairment. Uh, it's uh, because uh, when I was uh, young, I was born in France, and it's uh, easier for me to speak French than, uh, and I didn't have the opportunity to learn Chinese. I hope that if I had this opportunity, uh, I, I, I should be in the capacity to speak Chinese. But I'm, uh, I, I cannot speak Chinese, but not because of an impairment, just because I didn't have the opportunity to learn to speak Chinese. It's different. In this board, the incapacity to do is due to the uh, impairment. You cannot see the sight because you are blind. You cannot take the bow with your fingers because uh, you just have uh, one arm. Definition of uh, disadvantage or uh, handicap. Uh, it can be a physical, a psychological or a social uh, disadvantage. It's the damage the consequence uh, of the impairment and uh, of uh, the uh, incapacity. Because of that, you cannot do something which can be considered as normal for ordinary or ordinary for someone like you, uh, with your age, your gender, your social and cultural uh, uh, factors. Once more, we will uh, go to the board and if uh, with an agenesis in one arm you cannot take the bow with your arms you cannot uh, you have a disadvantage uh, to pull the string of the bow okay uh, if you are blind you cannot see the target and it's a disadvantage to sight the target and to organize uh, the trajectory of the arrow with a traumatic brain injury uh, you have a, an incapacity to absorb, uh, to take a lot of uh, information, to and it's a disadvantage to uh, uh, to see the sighter if the sighter is too 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 little, and uh, or to uh, remember how to adjust it. 
For example, in uh, the French team, there is a, a, a para archer um, who is uh, in the French team since 2015. So uh, this uh, para archer is uh, with us for uh, uh, five years. Today, it's not possible for this archer to adjust uh, the sight. For example, all the arrows are um, not in the middle, are uh, in this part of the target. I must adjust the sight. I don't know how to do it. It's uh, because of the uh, traumatic brain injury. And uh, we, uh, we try to help this archer to, to recognize the situation and, and to... Uh, have a sol and to have a solution to do that. And the solution is a technical paper. In this situation, if the, the arrows are not in the middle of the target, we speak to the archer, look at the target. After looking at the target, okay, I recognize that the, the arrows are not in the middle. I will take my paper if the the arrows are on the right side of the target, I will do that, and she will do that, okay? In this situation, we try to find together a way to compensate the disadvantage. It is your goal. Uh, as a para-archery coach, you must find the way to compensate this disadvantage. For the sensory uh, impairment, the people who are visually impaired, who are blind, the way to compensate the disadvantage is uh, to help them to use a tactile sight. For the um, motor impairment with the agenesis in uh, one arm, we spoke about this uh, man who cannot take uh, the, the string with the finger. The solution, the way to compensate this disadvantage is, for the beginners, to use a mouse tab. Thanks to the mouse tab, he can bite on, on the mouse tab and he can uh, push uh, on, on the arm and, and shoot. In this board, it's very important to understand that you cannot do anything to, uh, to fight uh, against uh, the uh, impairment or the incapacity to do. But you are here as a... Uh, as a para-archery coach, but also as a citizen of the world, you are here to help those people to compensate the situation of uh, this advantage. This picture is uh, very important for me. It's uh, the situ uh, equality and equity. It's uh, a way of thinking. It's a way of being together, of living together. And it's a way to... Uh, to find some solutions to compensate the disadvantage. And you must, it's not possible to give the same to the para archers, and it's not possible, and it's not, uh, uh, it's stupid to do that. Yeah, it's the first situation equality. And um, you are here to help them to compensate the situation of disadvantage. The first step is to recognize this situation of disadvantage because of the impairment, because of the incapacity to do. It's the exchange between uh, you and uh, your archer uh, that uh, will help you to do that. And after the situation is, okay, I recognize that for you, uh, I, I can, uh, it's not necessary to, to have a, a specific equipment. It's uh, the case in the situation of equity. It's the case for the, the man with the blue shirt. No problem. No, uh, it's not necessary to give a specific equipment. Oh, for you, it's necessary to give you uh, a specific equipment. The man with the red shirt need a little box. And for the man with the, uh, I don't know the name of the color, uh, uh, it's uh, necessary to have two boxes. Okay? So it's a way to compensate a situation of disadvantage. In this situation, it's a situation of age more than a situation of disadvantage due to an impairment, but it's a situation of disadvantage. Once more, equality and equity in para-archery. Um, it's uh, the way to compensate and, and not a way to, 
to help the, the archer to have a, a better score. Um, in this uh, picture, you can see a man. He's trying. He, he's uh, in in the, in the warm-up uh, situation. There is a wheelchair. There is a stool, and this man is standing. During uh, the ordinary life, this man is in a wheelchair. During uh, train, uh, the beginning of the warm-up, this man is standing. At the beginning of the competition, uh, for the uh, in the, the, the for the first arrows of uh, the warm-up, he will be on the stool. Of course, this man can ask us, "Oh, I think it will be better for me." To uh, use my wheelchair to uh, shoot because uh, I will be more uh, uh, stable thanks to to the wheelchair. The problem and and I will do a better score. The problem is not this this one. The problem is what is your impairment? What is the consequence of your impairment on the practice of archery? And when we uh, recognize that together with the classifiers. They will say, okay, for you it's possible to use a stool, but it's not possible to use a wheelchair. Because with the wheelchair, I will give you an advantage and I will not compensate the situation of disadvantage. It's very important to uh, understand that all the assistive devices are here to compensate a situation of disadvantage and not to give you an advantage on the uh, and the other uh, uh, archers. So, if you want to be uh, to to have a better score, it's better to go to the training field and to train more or to train better. If you have a situation of disadvantage, we must create uh, a specific equipment to uh, compensate uh, this uh, disadvantage due to your uh, pathology or uh, due to your uh, impairment. How to approach the disabled archer? Uh, you must try to understand their way of functioning and uh, and and the remaining capacities. Sometimes someone uh, phoned me and told me, "Oh, I'd like to practice archery." Yes, it's a very very good idea. So, what mm, can I do for you? Um, yes, but I have a problem. Um, okay, I, I can hear you. Uh, what is the problem? Um, I must say that. Uh, my uh, I have a problem with uh, my uh, right arm. She, uh, I cannot use my uh, right arm. Um, okay, but if you cannot use, it's uh, you, you cannot use. I cannot do anything for. Uh, yeah, yes, and I cannot use, and I cannot use, and I can stop. It's not my problem. My problem is not to understand what you cannot use. My problem is to understand what you can use and to try to find a solution for you to uh, use everything you can use. Everything you can use, everything you can give to me, uh, I will try to use it to help you to practice archery. It's uh, very important, uh, once more, they are very proud of what they can do, of what they can use. So you must uh, help them to use what they can use. You must uh, uh, help them to be proud of their remain remaining uh, capacities. For that, at the beginning, when you don't know anything about uh, um, uh, the, 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 the um, impairment of uh, the people, you can ask them for the impairment. You can read a lot of books to know the, the, what this impairment is, but it's uh, more comfortable and more uh, uh, para -archer, uh, as a para archery uh, coach, it's easier to use the warm up situations to explore the abilities of uh, of your uh, archers and to speak with them on the way to do. We can uh, you you can push them, you can pull them, you can use elastic band, you can use uh, some ropes to 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 simulate to understand uh, how they can grip, how they can push, how they can pull out. If they are stable or not, if they uh, and you right, everything you uh, you can uh, uh, use uh, uh, to understand their way of functioning to be sure that you will give them the opportunity to give their best and to uh, use uh, all the remaining uh, capacities. 
What do you need to coach archery and what do you need to coach in para archery? For archery, it's easy. You need a bow, you need some arrows uh, and a target, and you need an arm guard. In para archery, of course, you need the same, but you need a little more. You need a release head. Uh, that you can adapt. You need some stands. There is a, a picture uh, of a stand who can, uh, uh, which can uh, hold the bow, but you can uh, also use some stand uh, who can uh, use a tactile sight. You can use a lot of string, a lot of uh, Velcro uh, band, and uh, and a judo belt. Of course, you need sometimes a stool or a chair and you must know how to make a deloop, it's very important. And at the end, the most important is that you need to be creative. The example will go on the next slide. How to be creative. Um, for example, I can uh, have um, with me a, a tetraplegic uh, archer. Tetraplegic. You are tetraplegic when you cannot do this movement and you cannot handle something uh, uh, stronger. So it's if I, I put the, the bow in your hand, the bow will go away. So it's very important for them to end them and a way to compensate this situation is to use uh, to use a glove and there is some some uh, uh, some manufacturers who sell uh, this uh, kind of uh, gloves. And it's in the picture on the left. Uh, there is a specific glove for the tetraplegic people to practice a lot of different activities and archery uh, also. I cannot have this glove. I must create something. And it's very easy. It's, uh, uh, of course, <laughs> if I have the choice, I will try to use uh, the glove. But if I have no glove and I must uh, give an answer to a, a tetraplegic archer in front of me in the five minutes, I must create a glove and I will create it with some Velcro bands and it's very easy to create. Of course, the picture on the left is uh, with, with this glove you will, uh, uh, you will be uh, better than with uh, my uh, Velcro band, but it's, you are a beginner and of course we, the, for the beginner uh, we have a bow, uh, a little bow, not the, the competitor uh, bow it, and it's the same with the specific equipment. With the specific equipment I will try to find a way to create it very quickly to be sure that uh, I will give you uh, an opportunity to shoot uh, very quickly because if I... okay I will understand uh, I will need that for you, I will need that for you, I will need that for you. Uh, can you come back in uh, a week uh, or uh, a month and I will have everything for you? Probably this, uh, in my country, I'm sure that uh, I will not have the opportunity to, uh, um, to, to work with this man or this woman uh, uh, after this session. In this session, I must find a solution, I must be creative to find a solution to help uh, uh, him to shoot. Now we will uh, begin with the second part of the presentation, how to teach uh, archery for uh, the people with a disability. I told you that um, uh, archery is for everyone, that in my mind it's impossible to imagine that someone cannot uh, practice archery. Archery is for everyone, even if he or she is in a situation of disability. We will always have the uh, capacity to find a way to compensate uh, thanks to a specific equipment uh, to compensate her or his disability. If you accept that, uh, you must uh, create the condition of living together. You must create the conditions to uh, train together. Uh, for that, you must uh, uh, verify that your archery range is accessible of course, you must verify that the field of play is accessible, but you must also um, find a new way of thinking archery, find a new way of understanding archery with an, uh, 
um, inclusive, accessible way of th of uh, uh, of thinking archery. To do that, I will help you. Uh, it's very easy. You need to ask yourself a few questions. The questions are: Is there something common between the Olympic and the Paralympic champion in archery? Is there something common between the world champion in 3D and your local hero who uh, practice archery uh, every Sunday? The question is: What do each of them need uh, to uh, in order to practice archery? Once you have answered these questions, your uh, focus can uh, uh, become on each of them. Um, for each of them, your way of teaching will be the same, but your uh, level of requirement and the proposal you will make uh, to them will depend on their remaining capacities, on their motivations, and on your capacity to create the specific equipment they need to compensate their impairments if there is some impairment. Thanks to that, you will place each of your archer in the center, at the center of your teaching. It's the way to have an inclusive way of teaching archery. You can see on the slide, to hit the target with the arrow, you must do three technical actions. Our Paralympic champion, our um, Olympic champion, our world champion in 3D, uh, they are all doing those three technical actions. The first one is to give some energy to the bow. The second one is to put the arrow in the right direction. The third one is to release the string and to uh, release the arrow. Everyone, every archer on every field of play of in all the world are doing those three technical actions. It's our way of thinking archery. It's our way of uh, thinking an inclusive way of archery because it's the same for everyone. Everyone are making those three technical actions. The first one, to put the arrow in the target, you must give some energy to the bow. For that, you need two points of contact between the archer and the bow. One is in the grip and one is on the string. And after, um, uh, to give some energy to the bow, you must create a distance between those two points to create the good length. Give the energy to the bow. Uh, we can have ordinary points of contact. It's the end and the fingers. But we can also have a lot of different proposals. The first one is pro a prosthesis. This prosthesis can uh, be uh, in um, uh, to handle the, the grip. Uh, we can imagine a stand to help the people without uh, uh, the myo uh, with the myopathy, with a, a, a high level of tetraplegy who can who didn't who don't have um, uh, um, uh, as uh, the, the 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 energy to to pull the the, the bow and to. Um, uh, this stand can help them to do that. We can imagine a foot, we can imagine a release head, we can imagine some orthesis, some mouse tab, we can imagine a lot of uh, different points of contact. Those points of contact can create the good length. I told you that uh, uh, the archers need to have uh, two points of uh, contact uh, between uh, their bow uh, to create the good lens and to give uh, the energy to the bow. In this uh, new slide, we can see uh, four pictures of uh, four international uh, para-archers. Let's take time to uh, analyze them together on this point. All of them have uh, the capacity to use one of their arms entirely uh, for all of them, the choice was to use this ordinary arm to take the bow, uh, but they have different impairments on the other arm and we will uh, uh, make some uh, comments uh, on it. The archer in the picture on the 
top left uh, is uh, called Brian Leloup. He was uh, in the French uh, team. He cannot use his uh, right arm at all since he was born. So the solution for him uh, was to have uh, to have a point of contact between him and the string uh, was uh, to uh, create a shoulder harness with a release head. Uh, this material can only be used uh, with a compound bow in competition, but you can uh, be uh, feel free if you don't have a compound bow, but if you need to use a release head with a beginner, uh, to use it with a recurve bow, even if it's not authorized uh, during a competition. The second archer on the bottom uh, left is called uh, Guillaume Toucoulet. He's uh, from the French team uh, too. Like uh, as Brian, he cannot uh, use uh, one of his arm uh, at all, but it's after uh, for him it's uh, after uh, an accident. For him, the solution to compensate this impairment was to use a mouse tab. It's uh, the um, a, a solution for the beginners, which is very uh, easy and very quick to uh, to use, and you can have a, a very 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 good uh, good results uh, very quickly. To give uh, the energy to the bow, Brian and Guillaume uh, need to push uh, in their bow uh, with the with the ordinary arm, and the uh, part uh, uh, the, the 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 contact with the string uh, will not uh, move. Uh, the mouse tab will not move, and the release uh, head will not move. The archer in the upper right is uh, Jamie Harris. Uh, he's a member of the the. Great Britain uh, team. I've told you that for us, for uh, para arch uh, archery uh, coaches, it's uh, very, very important to use all the remaining capacities uh, of uh, of the uh, of the athletes. Jamie has an ordinary left arm and a more specific uh, right arm. You can see that he has one arm, a part of the forearm, and you can see uh, a pinch, uh, pinch fingers uh, in in this uh, photo. The solution uh, uh, used by the coaches uh, from uh, Great Britain uh, should allow him to use all his uh, capacities. So he uses a release head, but um, he will be able to uh, uh, to to. To pull the string with uh, his uh, 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 with the, with his uh, with his right arm. Um, the last picture is uh, uh, of uh, a Russian man. Uh, we, we can call him uh, Mikhail because his name is too difficult uh, for uh, to pronounce for a French man uh, as me. Uh, as Jamie, he has a regular arm and uh, a more specific uh, arm. Um, you can see that he he can have uh, uh, the arm and a very very little uh, part of the of the forearm. But it's important to understand that the the elbow can f uh, function. He can make uh, the the this uh, little part of the forearm can move. So it's because it can move. It's very important to use it and. And to use this uh, movement uh, during uh, uh, archery. For him, the solution uh, was also to uh, use a release head and uh, as a Jamie to uh, put uh, the energy in uh, the bow, he will uh, uh, pull the string with the elbow and uh, with the forearm. In uh, this uh, new slide, we will uh, illustrate uh, some uh, different solutions to compensate an impairment uh, in the bow arms. Uh, the first uh, picture on the top left uh, of the slide is uh, the, the photo of uh, Matt Stutzman, the armless archer from uh, the US uh, team. To make uh, contact with the uh, the, his uh, bow grip, he will use his uh, foot, and to make a contact with the string, he will use a release head uh, that uh, he will put uh, on uh, his uh, chin. And uh, the, the, the release head on the chin and the foot will create uh, the good lens. To create the good lens, he will push on, uh, on uh, his uh, leg. The bottom photo is uh, uh, um, the photo of the prosthesis of uh, Romeos uh, Romeliotis, is an archer from the uh, Greek uh, team. 
probably uh, we can imagine that uh, this man is very shy and he preferred to uh, uh, to have uh, the photo taken without him but the situation is clear we can easily imagine that uh, he's a forearm amputee and that uh, he choose unlike uh, Jamie and uh, Mikhail uh, in the uh, last uh, slide he, uh, he, he preferred to use uh, his ordinary arm to pull the string and not to push on, uh, uh, on the bow. The picture in the middle is the, uh, of uh, Jody Green Arm, an archer from uh, the team uh, GB, the Br uh, British uh, team, who has no, uh, uh, she has no wrist and no arm, and she uh, uh, has to use um, a small setup to to place his bow, uh, uh, to place his arm uh, uh, on, uh, on on the bow. Uh, Finally, the photo on the right part of uh, the slide is a photo of a stand that uh, I uh, created uh, and that we used in uh, France uh, to compensate uh, the situations of uh, poly handicaps. Uh, we can uh, use this stand to uh, help uh, people with uh, um, higher tetraplegic uh, and uh, with uh, myopathy to, to practice archery even if uh, they can uh, uh, um, uh, give us no strength. In these conditions, we will uh, use uh, the strength of their electric uh, wheelchair uh, to uh, to put the to 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 create uh, the the lens uh, because they will uh, um, move uh, move back the the wheelchair and moving back the wheelchair that will create uh, the, the 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 lens and uh, the. Uh, you can that you can see on the on the photo uh, will uh, maintain uh, the bow. The second uh, technical action, if you want to practice uh, an inclusive uh, way of uh, archery, is to put uh, the arrow in the right direction. For that, the principle is to place the arrow in the right direction and to organize your sighting system. Uh, once more, the Olympic champion, the Paralympic champion, the uh, 3D uh, world champion uh, must uh, organize their sighting system. They can use different sighting system, but they will organize a sighting system. To organize this sighting system, you must choose some parameters. There, you will have two parameters in the front and two parameters in the back. And we will see that in the next uh, slide. Uh, to choose these parameters, you must answer at uh, four questions. Two in the front, two in the back. The two in the front, say, uh, the questions are what do I use to aim? And where do I aim? In this picture, we can see Eric Pereira from the French team uh, with a camp on bow. And what do he use to aim? He will use to aim his uh, his uh, uh, peep sight and uh, and 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 the and the scope. Um, where do he will aim? Probably in the middle of uh, the target in the yellow, and probably uh, in the right on the, or the left or uh, of uh, of the um, of the target if there is a lot of wind. Uh, the question on the back are: What do I put on the string and where? And where is it on my face or on my body. Um, it's the same for every archer in the world. What do I put on the string and where? We saw with Guillaume that he put on the string a mouse tab. We saw uh, that um, the, the, a lot of uh, archers, uh, para archers, will use a release head and they will put this release head on the string. And where do I put it on my face uh, and, uh, and my body? For those examples, the mouse tab and the release head, you cannot move it uh, in, on the string because of the, of the, of the D-loop. Um, in, in 3D, we can imagine that some of uh, the archers um, are, are shooting with a bare bow. And with the bare bow, they, are, they, they will put their fingers on the string and they will move the fingers in different parts of uh, the string to adjust the trajectory of uh, of the of the arrow so the question for them is 
what do I put on the string? My fingers. And where uh, do I put it? Um, ten, uh, five centimeters uh, uh, under uh, the, the the arrow, one centimeter under the arrow, um, like that uh, with the arrow. It's uh, the choice uh, to to give an answer to to the distance of uh, of the target. And uh, and where do I put that? On my face, some of them will put uh, the 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 this finger uh, on the uh, near the the mouse, and some other will put uh, this finger under under the chin. So it's a uh, it's a choice, and it will uh, um, organize differently the trajectory of uh, of the the arrow. Back parameters connection with the impairment. I told you in this uh, slide we can see uh, a, a young man using a mouse tab. With the mouse tab, he, he will use a mouse tab because of his uh, impairment, and uh, it's necessary for him to use a mouse tab with a, a little uh, a bow for uh, for beginners. Um, and on on the the other uh, uh, photos, we can see a woman. Uh, this woman uh, will use the fingers on the on the string, but the fingers are uh, not on. Uh, uh, on the face, the, the fingers are uh, on uh, on the trunk. For this woman, it's not possible to move this end. You cannot do anything. The end must be here. So to to create the the, the lens, uh, she will put the string on on uh, on the behind the fingers on the trunk, and she will push on the bow. It's not possible for her to move the right end. So the questions are, um, for the back parameters, uh, what are you using? Fingers, release head, mouse tab, your foot. Uh, you can use a lot of different, uh, of, uh, different uh, things. And where is this, uh, um, this element uh, compared to the string? And compared to the face and, and the body, and is it possible to modify it or not? In this situation, it's not possible to move uh, uh, the mouse tab, of course, because uh, it's uh, on the string, and, you, and your mouse will not move uh, um, in different parts of your uh, face. And uh, in the second example, it's not possible to uh, modify the situation because the end of this woman must. Uh, cannot be uh, in a different place uh, than uh, the trunk. The front parameters, connection with the impairment, uh, what do I use to aim and where do I aim? In this slide, we, you can find uh, three different solutions. Uh, the slide on, uh, on the left is uh, the solution for the visually impaired archers. The visually impaired archers will, uh, will use some, um, uh, some tactile sight uh, to, uh, to, to, to shoot. And, uh, not to shoot, but to aim uh, uh, the target. With this uh, tactile sight, they, they will use... Uh, what do I use to aim a tactile sight? And I will push the tactile sight on, my, uh, on a part of my uh, forearm and, uh, and my hand. Um, the picture in the middle, it's uh, a young man who cannot move, uh, he doesn't have enough uh, strength to, to pull, uh, to pull the, 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 the string, so he must use the power of the electric wheelchair, and, and to aim, he will uh, look at, the, at, at a part of, uh, of the arrow, and he will pull the part of the arrow in the middle, uh, not in the middle for him, but in the part of the target. The photos on uh, on the right is very strange for some. Uh, I think for some uh, of you, because you can see a bow and you can see um, a little uh, red part. The red part is the sight, but the sight is not in the ordinary part of the of the um, of the bow. Um, for a right and archer, the sight is on the left of the bow and. In this situation, we can see an, uh, uh, this uh, red part is on the right part of the bow. It's very, very strange. Of course, it's very strange because uh, with this situation, you will uh, 
uh, give an opportunity to shoot for people with uh, visually uh, uh, impairments. We will see uh, uh, how that it works with the the, the next uh, the next slide. You will again find uh, three photos on this uh, new slide. We will start uh, by focusing on the uh, on the one on the middle. Uh, you you will see again our archer with the red sight, and uh, we can see uh, the target at the at the back of the gymnasium and a yellow paper uh, between him and the target. Concerning the front parameters, once more, as all the archers. This archer has to answer two questions. What do I use to aim and where do I aim? The answers are I use the red sight to aim and I placed this red sight on the intermediate yellow paper um, located probably six meters in front of me and this allows me to reach the target. I open the middle. Um, of course, from an arrow to another, it's very, very important to be sure that uh, the position uh, 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 of uh, my feet on the shooting line will be the same. If uh, I change the position of my feet, I won't be uh, able to use the same setting. Everything uh, uh, will, uh, uh, I will have to, to organize everything again uh, to to uh, to make a, a new position on the on on the site. Uh, this uh, method is, is a method for the visually uh, impaired archer. The visually uh, impaired archer usually shoot at thirty meters. With this method, uh, they can shoot m much further and up to uh, seventy meters. It's of course uh, not for every visually impaired archer. Uh, the Visually impaired archer in the VI1 category cannot are blind, and so they cannot see the sighter, they cannot see the red side, they cannot see the, the yellow uh, paper. It's uh, only for the VI2 and 3 the, who can see a little, can't see the targets at 70 meters, but who can see and who can aim um, in uh, uh, closer uh, elements. If you have a ever shoot in the wind if uh, you have sometimes uh, not aimed at the center of the target because of the wind. If uh, you had an experience in a cloud archery at uh, 150 meters, uh, you could not see the center of the target. The center of the target is on the floor. You just can see a, a flag, but of course you cannot use the side to the flag to aim the target. So you must use something else, and probably you will use something in front of you, in the uh, on 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 the ground in front uh, of you. So you have practiced this method before. Uh, you just need to exploit it differently for the visually uh, impaired uh, uh, archer who can't aim and can't see uh, the targets at the back of the of the gymnasium um, the the uh, the picture the photo on on the right you will see uh, a man who is uh, using a visually uh, 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 um, uh, a tactile sight to shoot. He must uh, also answer uh, to the question what do I use to aim and where do I aim? With uh, a tactile sight, of course, he will uh, use the tactile sight to aim. Uh, he will put the tactile sight in uh, the back part of uh, his hand or in his uh, forearm. It's uh, important to understand that the tactile sight, uh, once more, you it's uh, important to compensate the situation of, disab uh, of disability, the impairment, and not to uh, um, help them to shoot better. We can imagine that if uh, they take uh, a part of the of the stern uh, and and don't move because uh, the, the the bow arm is fixed on the on the stern, of course it's not archery. Uh, in archery, you must uh, your bow arm must move. So. With the visually impaired archer, you must touch the 
tactile sight, not take the tactile sight. If you take the tactile sight, it's uh, it's not on the rules and it's um, more helpful for you. So you must touch. You, it's not possible to to take. Um, so two question: What do I use to aim? I will use the tactile sight. The problem is with the other question. The question is where do um, I aim? When you have a blindfold, when uh, you are um, uh, visually impaired, you cannot answer this uh, question. Um, you can see with the, um, the, 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 the photo on the left of the slide, um, if you uh, lean backwards on this picture, uh, you can see that the, the back part of the arrow uh, will go on the left and of course the arrow will uh, go on the right. In this situation, um, uh, leaning backward or leaning um, in front of you, um, you touch the tactile side but uh, uh, because of the leaning of your uh, body, your arrow will go from the right to uh, to the left. The rules um, cannot allow the using a sound system, uh, as you can see uh, with the in uh, with the gun, and, and as you can see in uh, in skiing and, and shooting in the biathlon. Uh, I told you that. In para archery, we try to find solution to compensate the situation of disability, the uh, impairment. For the visually impaired archer, this is uh, unfortunately not uh, the case, and uh, they uh, remain uh, um, um, a disadvantage because of the rules, uh, which uh, uh, do not allow us uh, to find solutions to uh, help them to have an answer to this question. Where do I aim? I can have an answer at the question, what do I use to aim the tactile side? But I cannot have the answer of on where do I aim because of the leaning of, uh, of, the, of the body. The last action, technical action to practice uh, archery is to release the string. The principle is to reduce the time of contact between uh, the archer and the string to be sure that uh, the, the string will go and the, and the arrow will go uh, uh, front, uh, in front of you and to the target. The process is to release in a movement. The level of uh, requirement to, uh, the coach will have on uh, this uh, uh, technical action um, will depend on the, the ability uh, of the archer will depend on uh, uh, what they will use to 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 release a string because if you will use a release head and if you use your fingers it's not the same and we can see two photos on this slide uh, on on the left it's a little little boy who practice archery for uh, not for a long time and he's very very young so all he need all the power of his body to, 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 to pull the string and, and all the power of his body to, to release the string. So because of that, you can see that the, the end is go, uh, the, the uh, right end is going uh, far away behind uh, him. And the picture on the right, of course, is an international uh, archer, Maxime Guérin from uh, uh, the French uh, para archery team, and you can see that the the the, the distance uh, between the the the, the, the chin and, uh, and and the end of the movement is uh, of course shorter than the one of the of this young uh, man because he cannot use all the power of his body to uh, uh, to to shoot, but only uh, the the yeah, only the the right uh, the the back uh, of uh, is the shoulder. In the next uh, uh, slide, we can uh, see once more the four pictures um, we saw with the the way to um, to have two points of contact, and we will anal analyze for those uh, four arches the way to uh, to release the string. For Brian, uh, in the upper uh, 
uh, upper part of the slide uh, on the left, um, he will use a release head and how can he will uh, uh, pull, uh, pull the trigger. To pull the trigger, he, the, he will uh, make a movement on, with the chin. With the chin, he will push a little part of, uh, uh, of the release head and this part of the release head will push on the trigger and uh, the arrow uh, will, uh, will go. For uh, Guillaume on the left uh, and, and the uh, lower part of the, of the slide, he will uh, use a mouse tab. So to release the string, it's uh, very easy to understand that it just has to open the mouse. But be careful, uh, to open the mouse, uh, there is a lot of strains between, uh, uh, between the bow and, and his body. So there is a lot of strains on, the, on this part of, uh, of, of the neck. And when he will open the mouse, uh, he can open the mouse and, 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 put the, and, uh, and turn the head. And you must be very, very careful to, to, to open the mouse on the line of the, of the, of the strains. With the photos on the upper right with the Jamie, we uh, saw that uh, Jamie uh, has a, a pinch uh, uh, with uh, his uh, fingers. So he can use this pinch to uh, uh, to to pull uh, a little uh, string and, and and using that he will uh, pull the trigger and uh, and the, the the arrow will go for uh, the russian man uh, mikhail um, he can move the the forearm uh, with the, uh, on the on the elbow so when he is uh, ready to shoot he will move the forearm and moving this forearm that will pull the um, a string the string is on the trigger and when he will pull the string he will pull the trigger and the the uh, arrow uh, will uh, will go the last uh, uh, slide is uh, with um, once more on the uh, you can see easy uh, uh, bigger picture uh, uh, of uh, Brian Leloup uh, with uh, his uh, uh, this harness uh, on the on the shoulder and the photo on on the left is uh, very interesting for me it's uh, this man uh, is uh, in a electric wheelchair he cannot use any strength to uh, practice archery to practice uh, uh, any activity because uh, his uh, um, with his uh, myopathy he cannot uh, he cannot use strains. So you, we will use the strains of the wheelchair to, 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 to pull the string. And at the end, when he will have to uh, release the string, you can see that he had a, a close, uh, a close spin, a close spin in, uh, uh, in, in the, in the mouse. And he will bite on the close spin. And when he will bite on the close spin, uh, this action will uh, pull on on the trigger uh, because there is a, a cable between the trigger and the close pin and when he will bite on the close pin that will uh, uh, pull the, the this uh, cable and uh, and pull the trigger and the the the, the, the arrow will uh, will go so of course with this action uh, the last action release the string it's the same for everyone everyone must release the string uh, in an inclusive way you just uh, uh, have different level of requirement because you cannot have the same level of a requirement with a man with a close pin and with a man trying to uh, open uh, open the, the the fingers and now it's time uh, to give you the keys to uh, create your uh, own uh, assistive uh, device. In the following uh, slides, I will uh, show you how to uh, create some uh, specific equipments for beginners. The goal is uh, to find the cheapest way to do that, uh, to find uh, a way to adapt uh, these uh, specific equipments because uh, uh, to the, uh, the different types of uh, mor morphology of, uh, of, your, uh, of your beginners. You will see that the solutions are very simple. The solutions are all around you. Um, 
So the first one is for the adaptations for the visually impaired arches. The picture on the right shows two arches, one Italian and one French, during the European Championship in 2010. They both use and shoot with a stern and a tactile sight as required by the rules. The question is, what is the advantage of shooting with a stern? Um, why uh, is it necessary to shoot with a stand when uh, you are uh, a blind archer, a visually impaired archer? Since you are blind, you cannot see the line, the shooting line. You cannot see the position of the target, the position of your target. Uh, you cannot see, uh, you cannot understand where you are in, this, in, uh, in the field of play. You, you, you are in the middle of uh, nowhere. The stand are therefore a way uh, to uh, compensate this lack of uh, view to give you um, some points of uh, reference to allow you to locate yourself in the space. To do that, you must have two markers for your feet. The position of the feet will condition the position of the body. These two marks allow you to locate yourself on the ground and to have the, 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 the good, uh, the right posture of uh, your body uh, perpendicular to, uh, to your target. You can see on this uh, picture that uh, there is a bar on, on the floor, uh, on the ground. And this is, uh, uh, it's on this bar that uh, uh, the foot uh, marks uh, are located. Uh, then uh, you have located your foot, your feet, so you must uh, uh, try to, uh, uh, to, to raise your arms and, and to aim at uh, your target. For that, the stern is uh, equipped with a, a vertical bar, and on this bar, you you will see uh, the the tactile sight. We will uh, um, speak after uh, about the, the tactile sight. The photo in the middle is a stern made during a training session in uh, Algeria. Uh, we asked uh, the archers to find around them all the solutions they can find to allow visually impaired archers to, to shoot uh, with that. Uh, the uh, exercise consisted to uh, in uh, making this turn, trying this turn, and after we've made a, a competition between the, uh, uh, the, the archers uh, uh, using their own uh, uh, stern. Uh, the archers uh, were uh, uh, para-archer uh, archery coaches, they, they were not visually impaired archers, but it was a way to help them to understand uh, uh, um, how to create a, a stand and how to use it. Uh, like uh, the, the competition uh, um, you can, uh, yeah, you can, excuse me, you can see that in the photo in the middle, this uh, stand is uh, uh, very, very uh, simple. Um, there is a chair and you can see two uh, uh, broomsticks. The, uh, uh, as the stand for competitors, um, you can find on the floor two marks for uh, your feet and you can find on the broomstick uh, a little uh, pen to, uh, uh, that you can use as a, a tactile sight. Um, so uh, let's speak about the tactile sight. The rules is the tactile sight must not be larger than 2.5 uh, centimeters. But for the beginners, you can do what you want. And I think it's better to use a uh, uh, tactile sight uh, with a bigger size than 2.5. Uh, Why? Because 2.5 and, uh, and, 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 um, um, and 2.5 and under, it's a very, very little uh, tactile sight. The, the stand made in Algeria, um, is the, the tactile sight made in Algeria is a pen. So a pen, it's, you can see it's very, very short. You can just, uh, uh, it's very, very little. So because of that, you will focus on the position of the pen on your hand. And you are a beginner, so it's uh, um, for me is. I will give you an example with a, a, a 
uh, visually uh, Archer. It's uh, the same as if I ask you for your first uh, arrow to shoot at uh, 90 uh, meters on a, a 40 centimeters uh, target size. It's impossible. It's too hard because all your energy uh, will uh, uh, consist to try to find a solution to aim at this little, little, little target. In the situation of the visually impaired archer, uh, they cannot see anything. So the problem is not the size of the target. The problem is not the distance of, uh, of the target. The problem is the size of the tactile sight. If the tactile sight is too short for the beginners, all their energy will go on the tactile sight. And, the, uh, and you, you, you must uh, have in your mind that uh, the, to, to, to put your arrow in the middle of the target, of course, it's necessary to, to aim the target, but you will uh, also have to, to realize the, the, the posture, a good posture and, 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 um, and, and to make the gesture of, uh, of the archer. So for that, I think it's uh, better to use bigger uh, tactile sites for the beginners. In, in, uh, I uh, not always, but uh, often use a tennis ball placed at the end of, uh, of a stick. And this tennis ball is uh, 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 larger than 2.5, of course, and it's a good, good size. Yeah, okay, I just put my hand there. My hand is here or here. It uh, doesn't matter. The problem is not that. The problem is just to have a position uh, for uh, for my arm. But uh, I, I will not focus on the ball. I will have the opportunity to focus on the ball and of the of my posture and of the the gesture of uh, of the of the archer. In uh, these slides, we will uh, learn to create a, a shoulder harness for the beginners. Uh, it's very important once again to remember that uh, you must find solutions uh, to use all the remaining capacities of, uh, of the athletes. In this uh, slide, um, the photos represent adaptations for people who can use one ordinary uh, uh, arm and who cannot use uh, the other arm because uh, we can imagine uh, there is a brachial plexus, we can imagine that uh, uh, there is a strong hemiplegia, we can imagine they've been uh, ampu uh, amputated uh, of uh, this uh, second arm. But there is one ordinary arm and you cannot do anything or just a little uh, with the the second arm and and there is not enough uh, strength to uh, to pull uh, to pull the the string uh brian's uh, the the photo of uh, brian in the uh, left uh, top left um it shows again a, a harness for the competitor. This equipment is very efficient, but of course it's very, very expensive and it's adapted to his morphology. Um, you cannot use this harness. I cannot use this harness because it's the harness f uh, of uh, Brian made for him uh, and uh, very uh, um, uh, adapted to his uh, morphology. So. It's uh, not possible to, to imagine to ask uh, um, someone who wants to discover archery to, to create this harness and after, uh, 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 before uh, uh, shooting the, the first arrow. It's necessary to, to find an easiest solution. It's necessary to find a, a less expensive solution. It's, uh, uh, and, and, but of course, this solution will be less uh, efficient. Uh, the first solution is uh, to uh, use a mouse tab. It's the easiest uh, solution uh, to create, to manufacture, to and to use. Uh, all you need is a little piece of uh, of leather. In this little piece of uh, leather, you will uh, uh, make uh, two uh, holes. Um, the f uh, in the first hole, you will pass uh, the string of, uh, of the bow and with the second hole you will uh, uh, use the second hole to make a dilute from uh, the, 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 the piece, piece of leather to the, to the string. And uh, 
Uh, it's the fastest, the most efficient way to start archery uh, for the people uh, who can uh, use just uh, one, uh, uh, one arm. Probably for some of them, they can be afraid of that. Uh, it's sure that it's uh, uh, with the poundage of the bow for the beginners, uh, you will not have a damage uh, uh, to the teeth, you will not have damage to the cervical uh, area, to the neck, but of course they can be afraid of that. Uh, there are two international archers who are uh, uh, using this uh, method with a mouse tab. Uh, one American man, um, Eric Bennett, who is a world champion, and one French man, Guillaume Toucoulet, who is not yet a world champion, I, I hope very soon, but not yet. Uh, who finished second in the European uh, Cup. They shoot uh, bows with a, a poundage between probably 34 and uh, 42 pounds. It's a, a, a big poundage for, for the teeth. So, of course, in such a level of uh, poundage, it's uh, necessary to, to control the balance of the, of the, of the jaw and, and to control the, the quality of, uh, of, the, of the teeth to be sure that uh, there is uh, no problem uh, after the training session and the training session and the training session. So, the best advice is to start with the mouth stab. However, it's uh, possible that you actually quickly uh, want to use another, another uh, method because uh, they can be afraid of hurting uh, uh, themselves uh, with the teeth and, and, uh, and the neck and, and they are afraid to use the jaw to, to practice archery. In this solution, uh, I told you that para-archery coaches uh, should have a uh, judo belt, should have a uh, velcro straps uh, band, uh, should uh, have a release head. Now it's a good time to uh, to use uh, to use them to liberate the the, the string and the arrow. Uh, it's uh, already been said that Brian in the picture on the top of uh, left make a, a movement with uh, his uh, jaw. Um, he will press on uh, on a little uh, on a little plate this plate is uh, connected to uh, to the trigger and when he will press on the on on, on this plate th uh, that will uh, activate the, the the trigger and uh, and liberate uh, the the string and 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 the arrow if you don't have uh, this uh, carbon uh, harness you, uh, you can find your uh, and use your uh, judo belts and velcro straps. The first is to um, attach the, the, the band, the velcro band, around the torso of your, uh, of your athletes. Um, it's uh, to make a solid, uh, uh, solid band, solid strap, uh, strapping. And uh, after that, you will also uh, use the, the back, the part of the torso to, to uh, connect the, another, uh, another velcro band uh, and connect this band to, to the release head. So the release head will be under the chin and, and connected to the, to, to, to the band around the, the torso of, uh, of your, uh, your, your archer. In the two uh, uh, photos on the bottom of the slide, you can see how to, uh, uh, to, to, to uh, put this uh, this belt and how to put the release uh, the release head. After that, you need to find a solution to uh, to release the string and uh, and and uh, and the arrow. On the bottom uh, left uh, picture, uh, you can imagine that uh, this uh, archer has uh, probably no strength in the right arm. He cannot. Uh, uh, pull the string, but he cannot have uh, enough uh, strength to, uh, to, to use them uh, as a pinch and to press on the close pin. So to release the string, there is a release head. After the release head, you will uh, uh, connect a, a cable and at the end of the cable, you will have a close pin and to release, you will press on the close pin. On the bottom right, we can imagine that this archer has no strength. You can uh, more easily uh, look at the at the close pin. It's uh, easiest to to see it on on this uh, on this photo. 
but we can imagine that this man cannot use the uh, the 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 other arm to press on on the clothespin so the only solution for him uh, will be to bite on the clothespin for that you must have the the clothespin uh, on 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 your on your jaw uh, this uh, method is uh, for the beginners, but this method can uh, uh, can be used uh, by the top level uh, archers. You can see uh, on the top uh, right of uh, the slide the, the picture of uh, a Russian uh, woman. Her name is uh, Anastasia Zoyeva, and uh, she was um, in. Sh she shoots during the world uh, um, world uh, championship in. Uh, 2019 in uh, Sertogenbosch um, and she was uh, at the second place uh, of the uh, tournament for uh, uh, to, to win a place uh, for uh, Tokyo so it's a uh, high, uh, high level of, uh, of shooting and even if uh, she is at this high level of shooting she uh, is using a sort of clothespin and she bites a, a sort of uh, clothespin so with this slide you can see the Harness um, uh, for the for, for for the competitors with Anastasia and uh, with uh, Brian. And you, can, you can see harness for the beginners with the belt or the Velcro band uh, with these uh, uh, two men at, at the bottom of uh, of the slide. How to adapt a release head? Uh, uh, all releases can be adapted to uh, to meet the specific needs of uh, the archers, but of course, uh, uh, some of them will be easier to modify and and uh, and to create the uh, uh, specific uh, equipment. Um, how to choose a release head for a beginner in para archery? For uh, for my part, uh, I mainly work with uh, two different uh, release heads. The first one you can see uh, on on the, uh, on the on the top uh, left of the of the slide um, is interesting because uh, as you can uh, see, the trigger is not uh, completely solid. Uh, it has uh, a, a pierced trigger and. Uh, uh, this uh, is very very uh, interesting uh, for us and very helpful to uh, to create some specific uh, equipment the name of uh, this uh, release head with the uh, pierced uh, trigger is uh, uh, the trouble uh, stinger uh, why this one is interesting uh, because of course you can adapt it to all the characteristics and all the needs of uh, the para archers it's uh, helpful for you to create every solution to compensate every disadvantage uh, of the of the para archers um, for for example if uh, your your uh, the, the archer can use uh, the fingers it's uh, it's okay you you don't need uh, uh, if he can use the finger he will pull uh, the the trigger and there will need no adaptation if he cannot do that you will need uh, an adaptation and you will be able to to put some cables to put some uh, some string to put uh, uh, different things uh, to uh, to create a new uh, release head um, and and to create an uh, adaptive uh, release uh, release head uh, the the solution is to uh, uh, to use this hole to make a connection between uh, the archer the part of the archer he can use and the trigger in the bottom left uh, photo you can see a, a beginner uh, it was in uh, in Egypt during a, a training session uh, this man uh, was a, um, a, a track and field uh, um, para sports uh, man and he went there to help us to show how to adapt uh, the the, the the equipment to uh, compensate the situation of uh, of uh, this advantage in this uh, photo you can see that this man uh, can use the left uh, arm it's an ordinary uh, arm and with the uh, right uh, arm there is uh, no forearm no elbow there is just a just a little uh, stump uh, uh, on on his arm uh, you will easily uh, understand that uh, he cannot use this stamp to uh, to pull uh, the string so the first idea um, should be to to 
um, to offer to uh, him to shoot with a, a mouse tab. Okay, but that would not it's not the right answer. Uh, that would have been a, a pity because he can mobilize the, the, this uh, stump. He can move it and when and how he, he, he wants. So um, you, you, we must find a solution so uh, uh, that he can use it during uh, the, the, the movement of uh, archery. Uh, remember, all remaining abilities must be utilized. So we must find a solution to you to use this term because he can move this term. Therefore, as we had just seen uh, on the previous uh, slide, we need to offer him uh, a beginner's uh, harness with a, a judo belt or a, a velcro tape, so something, and and to uh, put this release head uh, in. Uh, uh, under uh, under the chin with the uh, with the velcro tape to give the energy to the bow he will uh, attach the release head and he will uh, um, he will uh, push on his bow arm and uh, make the uh, ligaments of uh, of the of the shoulders okay now there is some energy to the bow but there is no opportunity to release uh, the arrow. We must find a solution to operate uh, uh, the trigger. We must create a link between the trigger and this uh, stump. Uh, since uh, the trigger, uh, thanks to the, 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 the fact that the trigger is uh, pierced, um, you just have to, to link it uh, directly with a, a little, uh, with a little, uh, with a little string. And uh, uh, when uh, the archer will uh, mobilize the, uh, his stump, he will uh, uh, pull this uh, little string. This little string is uh, li uh, linked to the trigger, so he will uh, pull the trigger and liberate uh, the uh, arrow. Um, remember the photos with uh, Jamie and uh, Jamie Harris, uh, the the archer from uh, Great Britain. He has uh, a pinch uh, in his hand with a few uh, fingers um, so you you can use this type of uh, release head to help him to find solution of course uh, not now because this man is a competitor but at the beginning we can imagine that they, uh, they have been used um, uh, this type of uh, of release head to help him to to shoot uh, his uh, first uh, arrow um, Jamie can use a pinch, so we must find something that he can catch and, and pull. Uh, you just need to put um, a, a cable after the, um, after the, the, the pierced uh, trigger, and at the end of the treble, you will uh, make a, a ring, and uh, he can catch the, Jamie can catch the ring with his uh, pinch and, and pull the pull the, the the ring so he will pull the trigger and release uh, the uh, arrow um, you can uh, uh, see in the middle uh, of uh, of the, the the photo in in the middle there is a um, different way to uh, extend uh, this uh, this uh, trigger uh, we used a, a big big cable um, and this cable uh, at the end of this cable you can find uh, the uh, uh, a close spin. We uh, we saw that uh, biting the close spin, it will pull the tr uh, the cable. It will pull the trigger. It will uh, liberate the uh, the the arrow. Um, and there is another way of using it. It's um, for the people. Who can um, uh, have uh, the shoulder? Who can have uh, the elbow? But who can just have a part of uh, of the forearm? Uh, it was the case with uh, Mikhail, the uh, Russian, uh, the Russian uh, man. Um, for that, you will. Uh, it's uh, the right part of the, of the of the photo in the, in the middle. You can see uh, the. the the release head, and there is a two uh, uh, 
to weigh to add something uh, on on the on the release head. The uh, the the first one is uh, a, a bar w uh, with an orange uh, uh, string. This part will uh, be attached on on the elbow with uh, two uh, part two velcro straps to velcro tape. Um, the other cord uh, with a uh, uh, black uh, you can see a black velcro on the floor. Um, this part will um, be uh, attached uh, in uh, with the stem and two uh, parts after the the release head. One part will be attached to the elbow one part will be attached to the uh, to the to the stump one part with the elbow will uh, be uh, helpful to 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 give energy to the bow to pull uh, to pull the string and the other part will be helpful to uh, to use it to pull the trigger and to uh, to liberate uh, to liberate to liberate the arrow the second type of uh, trigger that we can uh, use, uh, uh, which is uh, very uh, helpful uh, for you, uh, is uh, the one developed by uh, Matt Stutzman, the uh, armless uh, archer. It's uh, also a trouble, and the name of this uh, um, of this release head is the fingerless. Um, you can see it on the but uh, on on uh, on the right of the of the slide. Um, you can see that this uh, release head, at the end of this release head, you can see a, 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 a bar, a black bar. And you will place this bar uh, at, at, uh, on, on your chin and, um, and after by increasing the, the pressure on your, on your shoulder, the, the head of the release head will, will turn and that will uh, release uh, the arrow. It's, uh, you can see it on the, uh, on, on the photo, uh, on the bottom photo on, on the right. Um, this man, you can see a, a black bar on, the, on, uh, on his uh, chin. He will, uh, increase the pressure on on the shoulder increase the pressure on the bow and that will uh, help uh, him to to release uh, the uh, the arrow um, this uh, uh, fingerless uh, release head is uh, very helpful for the people as Matt of course uh, without uh, any uh, arms it can be helpful for the people with just uh, one arm that they can take the bow with the one arm and use this uh, bar uh, with the, the the to compensate the the arm they don't have but it can be also very helpful in the w1 uh, category which uh, uh, tetraplegic profiles the the people who who cannot um, uh, in tetraplegic uh, men or, or women can can it's uh, very difficult to uh, to do uh, some movements uh, uh, precise movement with the with the fingers uh, for some of them so because of that it's uh, very helpful to use the the, the fingerless um, to compensate this situation that they cannot use uh, uh, very precisely uh, uh, the the fingers so I give you some example of the adaptation you can you can make in your uh, uh, in your structures to uh, to help people with uh, disabilities. Uh, I hope uh, you <laughs> you had understand uh, me, and I thank you for your attention. and uh, And I'm looking uh, forward to your uh, to answer to to your uh, question. Thank you.